Welcome to the art room. Mrs. Larby here. We have another art lesson this week. I think this is going to be a really fun one. We are going to talk about overlapping or showing order in our artwork. How do we know if something's in front and if something's behind? We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but let me tell you about your supplies really quick. You're going to need a sheet of paper for your artwork and a scrap sheet of paper. I was using um, actually someone's scrap paper from their homework earlier. <laughs> so a scrap sheet of paper that maybe was headed for the recycle bin. We're gonna do a warm up, a sheet of paper for your artwork and your crayons. This week, if you would like to use paint, this is a great lesson for it if you have some at home. Um, I wanted to just show you really quick what a paint setup might look like. This is my paint setup, what I do every time that I get out my paint and it's just a good practice. I always have a cup of water so that I can keep my brush clean. I always have something to dry my brush on. I used a paper towel here, a sponge would be fine. Just something to dab my brush on so that I don't get too much water on my paper every time I wash it. And then for my palette or what I put my paints on, I used wax paper. You could use a paper plate, you could use a plastic lid to a container. Anything like that would work fine. And then here's a quick demonstration of how I used paint for this project. I start my painting by making my shape and then filling it in if you choose to fill the first one in. But notice what I do when I switch colors. I wash my brush. I swish it in the water. I tap it on the side of my cup. And then I dab it off on my paper towel so that I don't drip any water on my painting. Do this between each color to keep from mixing your colors on your paper or on your palette accidentally. We want to wash our brush each time. When I'm finished, I wash my brush one last time and I don't leave it sitting in the water, but I set it to the side. If you leave it in the water, it's bad for the bristles and the wood on the paintbrush. It will start to get really loose. So wash and set it to the side when you're finished. So while it's really cool to use paint, and if you have it, go for it, I really like how this turned out with crayon too. So I'm gonna be demonstrating this lesson in crayon. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna move some of this out of the way. I wanna show you one piece of artwork by uh, the French artist Paul Cezanne. This is a still life. It's actually entitled Still Life with Apples. Very well named, I think. This was painted by Paul Cezanne in 1890, so well over 100 years ago. And this is kind of a cool example of overlapping. Take a look at the apples that are in the bowl on the plate, or in the bowl on the bowl. These apples are stacked together, right? And if I were to ask you which apple's in front, you would probably point to maybe these two that I have circled. We can tell that they're in front because we can see the whole apple. We can see the full shape of the apple all the way around. But there's also two other apples on the plate that are behind. And we know as the viewer, as the person looking at this artwork, that they're behind because we can't see all of it. It bumps in to the apples that are in the front. In fact, it's almost like parts of the apple are hiding from us behind these other apples. The same for the lemons and the limes on the side of the paper. If you look closely, you can tell that the lemon is in front. I can see all the lemon, the whole outside, all the way around. And then there's a line behind it that I can see about half of. And then there's another line behind that that I can just barely see. This just kind of poking above the top. I can tell that the lemon is closest to the viewer who is painting. And I can tell that the last line is the furthest away because I can only see a little bit of it. This is how we show order in a picture, what's closest to us as the viewer. All right, so with that in mind, we're gonna be looking at paint splotches. So grab your scratch sheet of paper and one crayon. Even if you're using paint, I want you to use a crayon or a pencil with this part. We're just gonna do a warm up together. The first thing we're gonna do is we're just simply gonna make a wavy line. We've practiced these in several different lessons before. This time, make a wavy line. Make it really tall and really small. Vary how tall and how small it is. And for a third line, I want you to stretch it out. All right. 
we're going to turn this wavy line into a shape. Watch me. I'm going to start my wavy line and then I'm going to curve it around until it connects back with where I started. We're going to call these paint splotches. That's my best name for this shape. <laughs> I'm going to flip um, to my other side of my paper just so I can keep showing you some more. I want you guys to try it now. Start a wavy line. Make it curve around until it meets back up with where you started. Go ahead, let's kind of put several on our scratch sheet of paper so we can practice. A wavy line, but I'm bending it into a circle. I'm going to make a little tiny one right here. <laughs> Notice how um, as I'm practicing, mine aren't touching. Yours may be touching and that's just fine. As I'm practicing, kind of spreading them out on my paper, these are not overlapping, right? But as we start our artwork, we're going to make them overlap just like paint that's been dropped on a paper and each color overlaps the next, covers up a little bit of the color before it. All right, you can put your scratch paper to the side, get out your piece of paper for your main artwork. This is the time if you're using paint, you can start using paint. Okay, our papers are vertical. That means they're up and down. I'm going to shift mine just slightly to the side. I feel like I do neater, more controlled work that way. You might find in handwriting that that's helpful for you too. And choose one crayon if you're using crayons with me. And here we go. I'm going to make, watch first, I'm going to make a big paint splatter in the center of my paper. I'm not going to go off the edge. I'm going to keep it on my paper. I'm not going to try to cover up all the white, but I am going to try to cover up the center of my paper. Here's my first one. You can watch. I just do my wavy line and then I have it meet back up again. All right, now it's your turn. Pause the video and you make your paint splatter and then come back. All right, we all have a big paint splatter. I just realized mine made a heart at the top. <laughs> we all have our big paint splatters. All right, choose another color. If you're painting, whoops, that's not it. If you're painting, you can paint this one in as you go. I'm gonna leave mine white with crayon because I think it looked kind of cool. You could do that with painting too. You're the artist, it's your choice. All right, we're going to make a paint splatter behind this one. We're going to make it look like it's behind because we're not going to see all of it. Every time we get to the edge of our main paint splatter, we're going to stop. So this is where I, well, I'm going to start there too. Here's where I'm going to start and watch what I mean. I'm going to start here at the edge and I'm going to start making my wavy line and then I'm going to curve it back and I'm going to say bump and I'm going to stop it right there. And then I'm going to color this inside section in carefully. I always like when I'm coloring using colored pencils or crayons. I like to keep my pencil lines or my crayon lines going the same direction. Just I think it looks very orderly and neat but some artists don't like for it to be orderly and neat and that's fine. Just a suggestion. We just want to make it easy for the viewer to see what we're trying to show them. I'm going to color in as I go. I would like for you to do the same. We're going to do a few of these together and then I'm going to talk to you for a minute and let you go off and finish yours. All right, so go ahead and color yours in as well. And then let's do another paint splotch together. Remember, you can always pause and then come back to the video if you need to. I'm going to move to the other side. I'm going to make my wavy line bump it comes back and it's hiding behind this main one. If you accidentally go over, that's okay. Just don't color that part in. That's part of learning. That's what we're figuring out. We're practicing together. Kind of a fun way to practice. I'm gonna color this one in. I'm being careful to stay within my lines so that it looks neat. Part of that is for the viewer. It's harder for the viewer to see what you're doing if it's um, not organized. It's one way to organize by keeping it inside the lines makes it easier on the viewer. We want the viewers of our artwork to be able to see what we're doing. All right, I'm gonna choose another color now. And I'm gonna add another wavy line. Oh, look, I'm gonna start right here on the blue one this time. 
wavy line bump and then I'll color all of this space in but this is behind the blue and it's behind the big first one that we made so I need to make sure that my color stays behind the other colors Uh, let's keep drawing together and if you need to come back and color some in that's just fine you can always come back and add more of your colors later but we'll keep drawing together all right let's start over here I'm gonna make another wavy line bump <laughs> I didn't even plan on it hitting there but it did all right I'm keeping my green behind my blue because in my picture this paint splatter is behind the other two that were already there I think you guys are starting to get the idea. All right, I'm gonna do one more green. I'm gonna go down here. Bump. Color this section in. If you're using paint, it's the same idea. You're painting your sections in. Be really careful with the paint that you don't accidentally touch the other color or that will smear it. You have to go right up next to it, but bump it and don't overlap it. We want our shapes to overlap, but not really our paint. All right, let's see. I'm going to go with another color now. I'm going to make a splatter back here. Bump. All right. All right, I think you guys are probably getting that idea. I'm going to color this last one in with you. I'm going to talk to you for just a minute, and then I'm going to speed things up for a second. Sometimes, um, well not sometimes, all the times, as things get further away, they get smaller. And while paint splatters aren't going to get that much further away, they are going to start to look a little different. So as we get to, let's see, we have this layer and then green, and behind green I have purple. I'm going to use this purpley pink color back here. I'm going to add a small paint spot in the very back and color that in. So they can start to get smaller as they go further away. They can also go off the edge of the paper. See how I let it go off the side, like my paint splattered right off my paper? That looks pretty realistic. Okay, so we would keep adding. I'm just gonna do some outlines. I would keep adding, and I would color this in, and I would come back and add a small paint splash, and we're just gonna keep doing this until we filled our paper. And I would go back and color these in as well. Maybe up here, this place looks a little lonely. Bump. All right, so here, let's go back and look at this final one. You can see that I have my main one. I chose to leave mine white. And then in the background, you can see these layers that I started to add. You can see even these small layers in the very back are peeking out from behind tells me those are the furthest away from me. I can't see as much of them as I can all these others because they're so far away. All right, friends, I hope you have fun with this. Um, remember, you can always send me a picture. I love to see what you're working on, and I'll see you next week.